Hello, you beautiful Life Path 7 person. Welcome to your uh, life sector overview. So what we're going to do here, we're going to look at how this year interacts with your personal life path number, and then we're going to get into your 12-month breakdown. Thank you so much for being here. So this year is likely, in terms of life in general, it's likely to surprise and delight and maybe even shock and awe. And I will say that your desire to be your usual hermit self, uh, you might be a little bit disappointed. This is going to be far too dynamic a year for you, for anyone really to be doing a lot of that. But there are going to be big changes this year and you're invited to jump on the roller coaster of life and ride that bad boy till it stops. The magic of this year for you personally will come when you understand that you need to be a moving target, right? So it's kind of like if you sit still the, and do nothing, the year, like effectively, you'll be a bit of a, a sitting duck for some of the heavier energies of the year. So be a moving target. Travel, expand, study, grow, up level, upskill, glow up, honey, right? Do all of it, whichever one of those suits you. Um, what I will say is you may feel a lot more like yourself this year and there will be pockets of the year where you really do find like you're able to just kind of step back and just be in the chill, right? To take some time out. It might be a year where you are really expected to do some very deep introspection as everybody will be, especially for that first half of the year. And I will say, because it's gonna be such a slow start to 2025, that's probably certainly uh, January and February. Those are the best months for you to do that life path seven thing that you like to do. Now, in terms of love, if you are single, your love sector could absolutely rock it one minute and then be totally dead the other. And again, the trick for you this year is to ride it when it's high and sit back and relax when it's chill. The same goes for love and love prospects. It's also a really good time this year to do some deep learning about your own sexual and sensual identity. Who are you when the lights go off? What do you require and desire from a partner, from all of those things, and from your interactions with others on an intimate level? If you are partnered this year, this is a year where you really need to relearn each other's love languages, right? But you also have to understand that whatever it once was, is probably not what it is now, right? So there might be some extreme emotions and feelings that bubble up to the surface this year. Um, and I would say you would do well not to bottle them up this year because they will explode at some point. Now, when it comes to your finances and your resources, in terms of money matters, be surprised, be ready and prepared for surprise expenses and or things that eat into your savings. Uh, and that said, I will say, if you make the excuse of, oh, I can't do anything because I need to save money, we'll cut it. That's not it, right? If you're thinking, well, you know, I can just say that I don't have any money and, and that will, you know, that will alleviate the, the thing and I can just sit home and be my usual hermit self. It's not going to cut it, trust me. Um, and I will say you will need to be active. You will need to be mobile and you'll need to be sensible with money. But in terms of growing resources this year, it's about figuring out how some of your ingrained skills and abilities really push you forward. Now, that doesn't mean you have to monetize every hobby that you have. It means that you choose things that you know you will be able to draw money to you with ease, right? So this year, it's like you'll be discovering just what an internal game money really is, right? And this is probably your best focus. Now, just as there could be surprise expenses, etc., it's also possible that there could be surprise boosts and windfalls to your money as well. The thing that I'm really trying to get across here is don't bank on that, right? Because the second you start to rely on it, it will be the moment that it's not there when you need it because you've made some other crazy move. When it comes to your work and career this year, work on your own initiatives this year. See things through to completion, right? The magic of the year when it comes to, to into your work is by you understanding that you're a part of a wider team. Even if you work alone for yourself or as your, as a one person business, work out what services you are able to provide that nobody else is offering, that nobody else is doing in your niche. Based on your own research, your keen and penetrating mind and intuition, this year you really have to figure out 
who you are in the team and how you can serve the collective with that version of yourself. Once you hit that, that's when the magic is really going to flow. When it comes to your physical health and vitality, health-wise, this might throw some either hidden or unexpected moments of illness this, this year. And if that happens, it's probably because you haven't really explored what you want or need enough. And this is why I say, be a moving target. If you just sit still, the harder energies can catch up to you if you're constantly moving. And that doesn't mean running, running yourself ragged and, you know, being, you know, you know, being social just for the sake of being social. Your social battery doesn't work like anybody else's. What I'm saying is as long as you keep it dynamic, the extreme won't be able to find you. All right. It also means that you if you you probably haven't been as active as you need to be, your energy, your body, your emotions, especially right, really need to move and to evolve this year. How you use your emotional energy is also going to be um, will really need to be handled in some way. It's also possible that any ailments that show up physically will very much have a spiritual root to them. Meaning that if you find that physical symptoms like if you really address your internal and your spiritual and your mental, uh, your symptoms will probably lessen or release or potentially even go away altogether. Obviously, I'm not a doctor or a medical professional, so take their advice over mine in that regard. With that said, stay tuned while we get into your 12-month breakdown. Hello, you wonderful Life Path 7 person. Welcome to your 2025 Tarot Breakdown. So let's get straight into it. Before we start, as always, I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity, and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise, and they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. So you're gonna get one destiny card, one direction card for each month of the year. Remember your first card out, it kind of typifies the year that you're about to have. And one of the things that I want to say is, 2025, I'm calling this the year of the reboot of humanity. Uh, you're going to see why when we look at a lot of the astrological considerations, it's kind of like we're switching it off to switch it back on again <laughs> to see if things uh, sort themselves out in a, in, in a sense, right? So um, with that said, let's get straight into it. And remember your first card this is kind of like the year that you're going to have and you've got the moon card, right? So this is somewhat a more reflective year for you. Uh, and, you know, if anything, I actually think the moon card is a card that's quite welcome for the Life Path 7 people. And the reason being is you guys tend to be a bit more reflective. The Life Path 7 tends more towards study, reflection, peace. Uh, you know, it tends to be, and you know, as a Life Path 7, you're the natural hermit. The universal teacher and student needs time away so that they can decompress and wring themselves out of other people's stuff, right? emotions, thoughts, etc. There's so many things that we kind of need to step away from uh, as a life path seven. I say we, I'm not one of you. I could never be that awesome. Um, now, jokes aside, the moon card is a lot more reflective. It tends to be a lot more inward. Uh, this is about journaling and instincts and feeling and intu intu intuition. Uh, etc. Now, what this tells me is, and this is something that I think is universally true for 2025, um, I think this year we, everybody, will be feeling that much more like themselves. And so one thing that I want to sort of reiterate for everybody, uh, I'm going to share this with you, I actually haven't said this in any of the other videos, is this is one of those years, like, you know that saying when it says, uh, when people show you who they are, believe them. This is one of those years because everybody's really this year going to be acting more like themselves than ever before. And it's in part because we all have the ability, the energy is supporting that, right? It's supporting us getting back to our individuality in some way, shape or form. Now, the moon card as your overarching energy means that this year might be focused on your intuition, honing your instincts, listening to your instincts, paying attention to your dreams, understanding your past, understanding your past lives if you're so inclined to believe. Now, uh, to clarify on this, let's give you a 
direction card, right? So we can flesh the meaning out a little bit. Let's see what's going on for you in January of 2025. Can you believe it? So with this, you've got the justice card. So thinking about past commitments, maybe assessing and reassessing and reevaluating your past commitments, being really honest with yourself about what you're tied to, why you're tied to it, and what that actually means for you. Uh, you know, does this sit right? Is this something or someone that I want to be committed to? Am I even committed to them anymore? And what does that say uh, for me, for my life path? Now, on a more practical level, remember the justice card is, is contracts, right? Commitments of a big nature. With the moon card, this may be you going back to or thinking about uh, picking up an old contract again. It could be anything from and up to and including your gym, gym membership, right? It's January. Now, that being said, one thing that I do want to really stress here, we start the year with Jupiter and Mars retrograde, which means the energy for that big dynamic push and, you know, massive sort of leap forward and all of that stuff, it's just not there this year, right? And so rather than burn yourself out for it, I mean, as I say, this year we all get to kind of be more of ourselves anyway. So I know you guys are going to be holed up somewhere in a coffee shop with a good book, your laptop out and lots of pens and, you know, things that you can write about and God knows what... Um, I mean, that might just be me. <laughs> I'll see you at the local Starbucks. Um, now, that being said, as we come into February, on the 4th of February, uh, Jupiter's going to go direct. On the 24th of February, Mars is going to go direct. Don't get used to that direct motion because, well, just wait as we move forward, you're going to see. Now, if you want to find out how all of this speaks to you, your sun sign, your moon sign, your ascendant sign or your rising sign, as it's also known, hit the link in the description box below where you can purchase your Astro Tarot for 2025. They are up and out there for your purchasing pleasure. Check them out. Now, that being said... When it comes to um, February, you have the devil card, right? So there might be a little bit of overindulgence going on in February. Uh, and this doesn't necessarily have to be a substance. It could be an overindulgence of, you know what? Raph said I could get to be more of myself this year. And someone says to you, you know, you haven't actually left the house in three weeks. Don't you think you might want to go and do some peopling? <laughs> right, there's a potential to really overdo this uh, in the month of February. So watch out for that. Now, to clarify on this, you've got the moon card. So this whole idea of reflection, peace, uh, staying out of it, staying quiet, being a bit more reserved... I love all of that for you, but you could be overdoing it here. And I will say February, obviously I'm not a doctor, this is not a diagnosis or anything, but February, there could be a little bit of uh, the black dog around, right? I, you know, the dreaded D word. But if you are feeling depressed, etc., February is actually a month where going out and interacting with people that much more will probably benefit you on a practical level. <clears throat> it's also... <clears throat> Because the devil card is addictions, habitual patterns, you know, thought processes, etc. And you've got this with the moon card, which can be very insular, very sort of um, reflective and not always in a light way. And so when I see these two coupled, this could be like a dogmatic thought process where it's just like you're locked into the, the way that you feel about this. And it's like, I just want to be miserable about it. Stop making me try, you know, don't keep trying to make me feel good or, or whatever the case might be. Um, and in the background, it's like there's somebody that's trying to sort of snap you out of this. Um, It could be as well, like, you know, it's been said that one of the most addictive things on the planet is our feelings. So this could be one of those times where it's like you just want to feel what you want to feel, but what you want to feel is not necessarily good or happy or healthy for you. This might be a really good time to see a counsellor, a therapist, somebody to help you sort of really process how you're feeling at this moment in time. Uh, now, as we come into March, packed astrological month, right? 
On the 14th of the month, we've got a uh, full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Virgo. On the 29th of the month, we've got a new moon solar eclipse in Aries, the last one in this axis, thank heavens. Um, now, on top of that, as if that wasn't enough, we've got Venus going retrograde on March the 2nd. We've got Mercury going retrograde on, uh, I think it's like the, in mid-March, basically, I can't remember the exact date. Now, that energy, both of those energies of Mercury and Venus are going to start their retrograde in Aries, come back into the sign of uh, Pisces, and then will go forward. And when they do, they go back into Aries. Do you see what I mean? We're switching it off to switch it back on again, because Pisces is the last sign and Aries is the first sign of the Zodiac. As if all of that wasn't enough, we have a massive big boy transit that's just dipping its toes into Aries and it's then gonna come back into. So the big boy planets, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune won't fully go into their new signs until 2026, but we're getting a preview here in 2025. So we're getting a heads up to kind of say, expect this in your future. This is a once, in a lifetime transit. It takes 14 years to move through a single sign. Do the math, we're not gonna see this again, right? It's a huge, huge deal. Now, the fact that we have all of this taking place, if you haven't got your Astro Tower videos yet, what are you doing? You're gonna get your booklet, so it's a, an Astro cheat sheet. You get uh, your um, lunations, you get your 12 month tarot breakdown, your life sector overview, check out the trailer just in case you think you might want to get one. The link is in the description box below. Uh, you can get one, you can get your sun, moon and ascendant or you can get the bundle. All right, so for March, you have the Empress card. So this is where things finally start to lighten up a bit. Um, this is, I think, a part of this as well is because there's a new dynamic energy in the air. It is still retrograde city, and unfortunately, we're not really done with the retrogradia, as I have uh, affectionately called it, um, since 2018. Uh, we're not done with the retrogradia until we get into April, mid-April at that, right? But March, you've got the Empress and the Nine of Cups. This is beautiful. This is wish fulfillment. This is absolutely feeling like you are loved, supported, and cared for. On a practical level, this is you doing some kind of body work. This now, I will say, Venus retrograde is not the greatest time to have elective surgery, uh, Botox, facelift, tummy tuck, all of that kind of stuff. Venus retrograde is also not the best time to have a um, tattoo or anything that's permanent, right? Especially when it comes to glowing up, should we say. Um, however, if you're doing something that is, um, you know, active, like going to the gym and doing all of that kind of stuff, that could actually be quite helpful for you because you're taking a remedial action. Now, um, the Nine of Cups is wish fulfillment. Venus, uh, or should I say the Empress is Venus. This could be a big boost to your finances of some sort that just comes in very much on its own. It could also be <laughs> that you're focused on like this dark night of the soul that you're having January and February. It comes to a close and when you come into March, I think you will feel again more like yourself than you have in a long time. And at this point, you may feel like, you know, not necessarily like, you know, you're never going to be a social butterfly. You're a life path seven, right? But you might feel like, you know what, now I can do the social stuff on my own terms in a way that is actually enjoyable to me and it still feels good, right? It's not like I'm peopling because I have to get out of the house. Um, although, okay. Now, as we come into April, as I said, both uh, Venus and Mercury are gonna go direct. They'll go direct in Pisces. It's not really until the 15th, though, that everything is moving forward uh, fully. So if you're gonna do something or you wanna launch something brand new, you're gonna need to wait until after April, all right? So, uh, after April 15th. Now for this, you've got the lover's card. Love, relationship, partnership may be a consideration for you, but it's also, remember the lover's card is about a choice, a real choice, a big choice, a consequential choice. And you've got this with the page of swords. 
Whatever you are focused on, whether this is an interview situation, whether this is a new job, new studies, uh, new methodologies, new ideas that you're taking on board or new things that you're working into your daily habits and routines, whatever you're starting in April, you'll be revisiting here at the tail end of May going into June. All right, like there's whatever you're working on in April, it carries through the next quarter effectively, right? So whatever you start here. Now, when it comes to partnerships and relationships in general, there are gonna be a lot of focus on the paperwork, a lot of focus on crossing the T's, dotting the I's, getting things done. Um, it's also possible that some of you could be starting a new relationship at this time. Now, as we come into May, Saturn, is going to move into the sign of Aries. Remember what I said, it's just dipping its toes, but we're gonna get a taster of what this is gonna be about for us. Where is Aries in your chart? Do you know? What does that mean for you, right? All good stuff to find out. Now, this is a once, so it takes 30 years for Saturn to move around the zodiac. So we haven't seen this transit in 30 years. If you're under 30, this will be like, the first possibly second time you're seeing this if you because it's saturn the first saturn return happens around 30 years of age right um so really interesting stuff now for uh for may you've got the strength card something will require extra effort extra courage extra grit and determination in the month of may it's really about you being brave and wow, look at this, you've got this double strength card. So whatever you're doing in May, this is something that requires tremendous courage, heart, um, personal sort of grit and determination. I don't know why, I feel like for a lot of you, this is something like a parachute jump or you know, like those big long zip wires. There's something that you're doing in May that takes an incredible amount of courage it may be something really fun, but uh, you know, and it's got like a real sort of fun and enjoyable twist to it, but it's, it's you know, something that's gonna make your heart race. Now that's on a practical level, on a more sort of um, professional or academic level, the strength card represents a moment at which, like the full card is the leap of faith, where you kind of just say, you know what, fuck it, I got nothing to lose and I'm, I need to try. Whereas the strength card, basically, this is where we say to ourselves, I need to take this calculated risks. I know it's a risk. I know it could go in a million different ways, but I really feel like this is where I'm supposed to go with it. So I'm just gonna follow it and hope that it works out. This is where you swallow down how you feel and you, it's like, you know that feel the fear and do it anyway. That's gonna be the month of May in a nutshell. Now, as we come into June, Jupiter, the Lord of blessings, growth, abundance, levity, uh, prophecy, vision, meaning, uh, dignitaries, people that can help us in some way, shape or form, moves uh, expansion, growth, moves into the sign of its exaltation. This is where Jupiter does some of its best work in the sign of Cancer. We get this, this is a once in 12 year transit. So enjoy it while it lasts and milk it, right? For 12 months from June the 10th-ish, uh, nine or 10th, give or take wherever you are in the world, uh, we've got 12 months of Jupiter in the sign of Cancer. Use it or lose it, right? And again, if you wanna find out how that speaks to you, your sign, your sun, your moon, or your ascendant, hit the link in the description box below and get your Astro Tarot. So for this, you've got the Emperor. So in a lot of ways, this is you becoming an authority. This is where you really get to sort of demonstrate your intelligence. And what I really like is from March onwards, it's like you're living life more on your own terms at this point. You're starting to really tap into this. You've got the Three of Pentacles. I would not be surprised if a lot of you come June, go into some kind of formal education. And when I say formal education, I mean literally as in you go in, you sit at a desk. Could it be online? Yes, absolutely. But the, the emperor coupled with the three of pentacles is usually like classroom learning. So if it's online, it will have a more official slant to it. Maybe it leads to a qualification. Um, maybe you get a certificate for it. 
maybe you're taking RAF's tarot course um, <laughs> where you do get a certificate. So something to, uh, to think about maybe. Uh, that being said, the Three of Pentacles is also the spirit of collaboration. And you've got this with the Emperor. This is either you working with or working alongside or having someone work alongside you as the authority. You're working with a big fish client. You're uh, maybe being assisted or supported. Maybe your boss comes to you and says, we're giving you an assistant, uh, you know, for the amount of work that you do, etc. There's something here where there is a collaborative sort of energy that comes in and it sees you really learning, like your learning ability is already pretty incredible but it's accelerated in the month of June. So really, really nice. Now, as we come into July, Mercury's gonna go retrograde for the second time this year. It retrogrades in the sign of Leo and it's gonna stay in the bounds of this sign this time. Um, as if that wasn't enough, once, maybe twice in a lifetime transit, Uranus is moving into the sign of Gemini. I smile every time I say this because I've got some really interesting ideas and theories about where this is going to go, um, where humanity is going to go as a result of this transit, and I'm really excited about it. Um, this will be, uh, again, it's just dipping its toes, right? It's coming into the sign of Gemini, it's going to reverse back into the sign of uh, Taurus, finish up, and then 2026 it goes in full time. For this, you've got the Temperance card. So you're finding a new sense of balance at this time. I actually see the Temperance card more than the Hermit card, even though you are the Hermetic number. Um, but more than the Hermit card, I see the Temperance card more as the energy of uh, the Life Path 7. There's something about your, your energy with this card that really speaks to me. It's like the balance of the inner and the outer realms. Just like your, your Life Path number balances the scientific and the spiritual, this card balances the inner and the outer realms. So you're finding balance. Look for equilibrium over the course of this week, and I love that. Um, now, to clarify on this, you've got the Six of Swords. So not only are you finding balance at this time, this could also be a time where some of you are taking a trip for spiritual means. This could be that you're visiting a sacred or a holy site. It could be that you're going on a journey that you know your ancestors walked. It could be that you're visiting a land of your heritage. I wouldn't be surprised about that last one either. Like if you've never been to, like so for me, uh, as many of you know, like I'm a mix of multi, multi cultures uh, and I've only ever been to one of the places of my heritage but I felt much better in that space. And I've got this, you know, sort of a working theory or a working hypothesis, let's say, that your DNA, like your physical being, needs to touch down on the soil that you're born from uh, to, to really, like, I can't explain it, but it's like there's something special that we get from that. So when I visited Greece, as many of you know, my mum's Greek, well, she's part Greek, she's half Greek, um, but when I went there to hear the language spoken, to have my feet in the sand there and to visit the ocean and just experience the culture and the country, there was a part of me that felt like, yes, this is home, right? This is where I'm from. July is a really good month to do this kind of thing. Go back to one of the lands of your heritage to discover or rediscover or redefine different parts of self. Now, as you come into August, you've got the death card. Endings, completions, culminations. You're shutting something down or something's coming to a close. And it is the lover's card, right? So it's possible, not guaranteed, but it is possible that a relationship, a partnership, a collaborative effort may be coming to a close or coming to an end at this time. It's not a guarantee. Now, if you're partnered, married, or in a long-term commitment, this may be the relationship that comes to a close, or it will be some aspect of the relationship that needs to evolve now. As an example, you go out to work, your partner stays home with the kids. One day you come home and they say to you, I can't do it anymore. I need to go back to work. I need you to stay home with the kids, right? something about the relationship is going to need to shift or to change or to evolve in some way, shape or form. Um, 
and I actually think this will be a good thing, right? For a very select few of you, this may spell out the end of a relationship, yeah? There's no, I can't say that that's not a possibility with this combination of cards. If you're single, this could be the end of singledom, right? It could also be where maybe at this time, you decide to say, you know what, universe, I'm not gonna make the choice here. I'm gonna let the choice be made for me. And how do we do that? We do nothing. We wait to see what happens without our input. That's the easiest way to, to allow a decision to be made for you. Now, as we come into September, we've got the second eclipse season of the year. On the seventh of the month, we've got the full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces. On the uh, 21st of the month, we've got the new moon solar eclipse in the sign of Virgo. Pretty big deal. Again, if you haven't got your Astro Tower stuff, you know what to do. Um, for this, you have the world card, your communities, and also the next level or iteration of your life shows up in a big way. And you've got this with the page of wands. This could actually be uh, important information that's coming in from you, from your local environment. It does feel like it will be that as well. This will be a shift that's taking place in the, in the area that you live. So maybe the local authority decides um, you know what, we're donating X amounts of money every year to uh, regenerate the parks or we're going to regenerate your local village or high street or whatever it is that you live in. Um, you know, and it does because it's the page of wands. This is good news in some regard that's happening to your community that you will eventually, if not immediately, benefit from. It may be something that you want to get involved with, even though you're a life path seven. Maybe you want to get involved in a community project of some sort, and this is highly favoured for you because it means that in the long run, you're creating a really solid base for yourself that feels like you're surrounded by the right people that support you. For October, you've got the Tower card, all right? So it's looking a little bit rocky in October. There's no getting around it, right? It is the Tower after all, and you've got this with the Three of Wands. An entrepreneurial venture that you take or have been taking etc maybe hits a rough patch or a patch of oil on the road or whatever you want to call it in the month of october the three of wands is actually a very lucky card so this could be like a disruptive experience that you have that actually um benefits you in some way shape or form if you've got your own business I will say watch out for supply and demand issues in October because it may be that you have this massive influx of clients and business, which is yay, but if you don't have the infrastructure or the inventory to serve them, that's a problem, right? So stuff to think about here, I would say for sure. Another thing that you wanna consider um, is the Three of Wands is about surveying things. Now, you remember what I said to you here in August? like that sometimes the way to have a decision made for you is to step back and do nothing. Well, October is not one of those times, right? If you wait too long on an opportunity that shows up for you, you probably will miss it, all right? It's not to say that you won't have another one later down the line or in a different way. Um, it's just to say that this one in particular if you wait too long, you, you will lose it, all right? So just something to consider. As we come into November, the third and final Mercury retrograde of the year, this is Mercury retrograding in the sign of Sagittarius coming back into the sign of Scorpio. And for this, you have the Magician. All right, so watch out for that trickster energy with the Mercury retrograde at this time, because um, it could be rife. To clarify on this, you've got the Ten of Swords. Um, the word that came to my mind as soon as I saw that Ten of Swords and I was holding the image of the magician in my mind is fainting. Not as in like, ah, fainting, but as in fainting, like when you go to go left but you actually go right. There's going to be some kind of misdirection in November and I want you to be aware of this because it's a deception of some sort, okay? Keep your wits about you. Now, the Ten of Swords is an ending, a completion, a culmination. It's like a mini death card, effectively. And because you've got it here with the um, the Magician, this could be a powerful or well-respected person in or around your life that maybe passes away at this time. It could also be the breaking of ties 
with somebody that you have considered somebody that you respect a lot, somebody that you really feel, um, do you know what I mean? Like somebody that you feel really good about, etc. Like it's just a possibility. It's not a guarantee, but it's a possibility. Now, as we come into December, you have the hanged man. It's a decidedly slow completion to the year. The same way that it's a slow start to the year, a more sort of inward, insular start to the year. The Neptune, the Hanged Man card, is really encouraging you, one, to really lean into your spirituality, and two, you're being asked to really consider how it is that you can step back, reassess, reevaluate. And this would be the wisest use of this time, and you've got this with the Magician card. So watch out, because November, it's like somebody's trying to dupe you, whereas December, you will not be duped. And actually, your spirit, your intuition, your intuitive faculty will be giving you every bit of tea that you need, honey. okay? Like, you will be fully aware of what's what, who's who, and why people are behaving a certain way. I actually love this combination because it's like your intuition is firing on all cylinders and you have a powerful intuition anyway. As a life past seven, you're naturally very intuitive. Um, interesting stuff, really, really interesting stuff. Now, that being said, for your um, challenge and power months, right? January, February challenge months, there's no getting around it. Um, May, I think, is neutral. August challenge month, October challenge month, November challenge month. Your power months of the year, March, absolutely stellar, love that. I actually really like April, June and July, power months. Uh, September, power month. December, absolute power month. Love these for you. Now, in terms of your human design oracle message, this is kind of like your key to the year. It's like that last little tidbit of information that the universe wants to give you to kind of send you off in a certain direction. And yours this year is the Gate 37 and Sweetness. This is a card of family. It's about the, the, the and you know, family's not always by blood. Sometimes family is our chosen family. It's our friends. It's the people that we surround ourselves with and collect over the course of a lifetime. I really feel that this will come sort of really deeply into play in March, in May, but especially here in September. This here, who you're surrounded by, who you're connected to, the part that you're playing in your local uh, community and the community that you're building around yourself is really, really strong at this time. And this is about the sweetness of life. It's about enjoying the best of what, you know, the milk of human kindness actually means. It's about really building a sense of community and support and insulation around yourself and being a part of something bigger than yourself. With that said, I wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff. Have a fantastic year. Uh, come back month by month, every three months, every six months, however it speaks to you. Thank you so much for all of your support. Have a fantastic 2025. Take care and I'll see you soon.